Hey guys, I'm John Kirsch Kripper. I'm from uh, Blue Bird LP. And uh, just looking forward to everything we got uh, coming up here. Uh, Michael Collins from Cinecore, a uh, former UB grad, and uh, looking forward to seeing what kind of cool mobile apps you guys got. Uh, my name is Scott. I'm from Infotech Niagara, and I'm excited to see you guys got these names alone. They're uh, pretty sweet, so it should be fun. <laughs> Alright, thanks guys. Thanks for being here. And we also have to thank our, our silver level sponsors, GitHub. You like that ice cream? Yeah? Yeah? Yeah. 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 Engine Yard, the CSE department for letting us use this building. Thank you for respecting it over the weekend. And uh, Refulgent Software, the team behind Hamburg. So, with that, oh yeah, the organizers award, that's question marks. Don't worry about that later. All right. So, first off, EDOTS, if you could come down, we'll get you set up. And you have two minutes to demo. It's a strict two minutes. You will be cut at two minutes. Oh, and before I forget, IronIO is sponsoring Raspberry Pis, uh, four Raspberry Pis for the team for the best use of the IronIO uh, uh, service. Um, and did anyone use Twilio? By the way, just curious. Yeah. yeah. We use Twilio. That's awesome. So yeah, that's Twilio hack. That's Twilio swag and four twenty dollar gift cards. It's Amazon. It spans over a course of six months, 
and the patient has to be given medication under supervised treatment every single day. So this is this called DOTS, directly observed therapy short course. So um, there's a problem in countries like the UK in which, in which they do not have sufficient manpower in order to send the care caregiver to the patient's house every day in order to uh, supervise the medication. So this is where our app comes into the picture. We have a video. So in our app, the patient, uh, we can take a video of the patient taking her medication and um, and upload it to the server. And on the back end, the nurse. So this is the this is the video being uploaded. This is the video being taken of the patient taking the medication. And um, so this is the video of the server being downloaded. And the nurse is watching the video. So this is just a way of <laughs> this is just a way of direct supervision remotely, without the nurse having to go to the patient's house. So this saves a lot of manpower and infrastructure and a lot of resources. So uh, this, one, and this is a web interface, as you can see. You can see the patient names. Then um, yeah, and we also have a picture. Um, so the patient can also take a picture of the barcode of the medication. <laughs> so, Brandon is working on it right now. So the patient can take a picture of, of, of the. Oh, okay. So uh, we also have a face-to-face. -face, uh, we also made it where if the uh, if the patient has any questions, they can talk to the doctor. So uh, it's like a FaceTime. So we're going to demo it right now. So it's a FaceTime. So it's a doctor patient, patient conversation. And we would like to thank OpenTalk, Twilio, and SendGrid for allowing us to use their API. Thank you. Alright, Mr. Next, can you up like over on the other side of this lecture hall? So, you can take this after these guys go head over that one. <laughs> We synchronized microphone input and speaker output, and we did it all so that we could find the natural frequency of this. 
because we want to break it. But one hour ago, the rocket broke, and we can't. <laughs> but it worked. We had it for a second. That's our project. Thank you. exclusively for UP students. This is currently live for Buffalo students, but it's actually can be used by any college students based upon their email ID group them together as a single Craigslist. And this is very simple to use because I've seen so many um, posts on Facebook where students post their stuff they're selling and subletting the place over there. And I made it easy for students to post it over here. It's a very simple UI. All you have to do is just sign in with your university name. So, so there is a login page, and there is a profile page where the current user posts these stuffs, and this is a home page where on the right hand side you can see the posts made by other users, and on the left hand side is a place where you can post your stuffs over there, and there is a profile page, and there is a settings page. So this is very minimal use, like only for you know posting yourself whatever you want to sell over there and you don't have to pay anything over here. All you gotta do is meet the buyer, I mean the seller on campus and you know you can get yourself and pay them in person. So it's a way to meet other guys and this users this entire application is built on Rupee on Rage. And yeah, that's it about this app. And this application goes live tomorrow and you can also check it on ubcraiglist.herofo.com. That's it. Thank you.
Hi guys, we are Team Shopper Stop. Uh, we are a bunch of guys who are also roommates and we are passionate about food, so we thought making a shopping app. And uh, this is it. I mean, you you have a shopping list, you you have your app, and you want you want the shortest time to get into the store, get your stuff, and get out. And that's what we worked on. We worked on an algorithm to to find your shortest path to get your stuff out and, and get out of the store. So um, can you help me shop, please? All right. So so this is pretty much how how we get our algorithm. We try to solve the traveling salesman problem using some heuristics techniques and uh, I mean obviously you can't solve that but uh, we, we've divided into quadrants, we use an algorithm and we use the minimal amount of data structures so that was it. Hi, good afternoon. We are survey not to be. Uh, our idea is very simple. We realize that there isn't a good enough application that allows you to print questionnaires on mobile devices. One. And B, we thought how how cool would it be if you could just collect survey responses from people in your nearby geographical vicinity. So professor in a room, uh, retailer in a marketplace, he just wants to know what the shoppers on the floor think. So we try to build an app that kind of takes away the trouble of remembering a pesky URL and allows you to just see the surveys that are close by, uh, put your responses in, and we can take it further from there. Uh, we, have a, we have a simple flow. This is uh, like a create page. You can go in and create a survey. Uh, we try to build a simple enough UI where we give in a bit of predefined options of questions that you want to create. Put in a custom option and some text right here. That's up to the top. So, yeah, we have to keep it simple enough. So, that's your create flow. You can create surveys and publish them all. Uh, then as a user, you can go in, see the surveys <coughs> around you, go down into a survey, give your responses, and then click on the head. And obviously, you want to be there. And the third ad that we put in was uh, for the person who's created the survey, you can see the results. So here we see the different surveys that he's created, the count of people who have responded so far. And uh, for every question, we present a pie chart of the responses that are coming in. It's, it's a hack where we're trying, kind of trying to, trying to do it dynamic and pull in numbers and change the pie as it goes along. And you just quickly go through the results and see the kind of responses you've got so far. So that's a way of Thank you. Hi, I'm Joe. Um, my idea came from uh, taking CSE 241, which I'm sure a lot of you have taken. Um, you have to do a lot of converting of numbers, and I just wanted to make like a nice, simple, easy way to do that. So with my app, all you have, you have all of them listed. You can just click on any of them. You type in whatever number you want. You convert it, and it just converts them for all of them. So you have them all right there. And then I spent a lot of my time making some pretty sick looking custom buttons, if I say so myself. <laughs> all of which have selected states, because you know, you gotta feel like you're actually pressing something. So I mean, that's just to add enjoyment to your homework while you're doing it. You got to leave, and we got everything you need there. And if you really want like a really long hexadecimal, yeah, look at all those buttons, right? <laughs> Convert that, you got scroll mode, so everything fits on there. And you can try writing that on a piece of paper. <laughs> and that's my app.
So I guess I assume that we are going to be knowing about uh, Reddit. Uh, it's a it's a leading uh, social news service, and I guess everyone will be using Spotify as well. So we wanted to build something which we would like to use ourselves. Uh, we wanted to build uh, the awesomeness of both uh, Reddit as well as uh, Spotify. So then uh, we thought of Spotted. So what Spotted does? Spotted uh, passes through pages in Reddit, as in Reddit. In, in Reddit, you have a lot of subreddits where uh, uh, this is one subreddit where, where a lot of people post a lot of good stuff, uh, like a lot of good movies, uh, I mean songs. Yeah, so what, what they do is, what we do is, we crawl through all, the, all these uh, links and uh, we generate links in Spotify corresponding to these links. So whatever the music you have here, we generate corresponding Spotify links for that. So we make Spotify playlists based on Reddit links. So that's what we do. And we do have uh, an interactive feature here. Like uh, we have a subreddit that we can select from and uh, boom. So we have the, uh, the middle life in generating uh, Spotify playlists from that particular Reddit. So uh, we do have some downsides here, as in uh, there's a lot of problem with the Spotify API. Uh, we couldn't query a lot of songs. There were, I mean, there were not many songs, and uh, the way we were searching for the songs was not the way we were supposed to do. It. So yeah, uh, that's about. Hi everyone, I'm Bhavya. Um, our API is Bond Voyage. As the name suggests, Bond Voyage is designed for specifically for a safe trip for everyone. Soon there will be summers, we'll be traveling, uh, we will be making plans for our trip. The most important concern for our trip is the safety of us and the people with traveling with us. In Bond Voyage app, the user will be entering the source, the source uh, address as well as the destination address. So the user can enter the source address as, as well as the destination address. The source address and the destination address can be in a string format. Um, after the user enters the source address and the destination address, we are using the spot crime API. The spot crime API analyzes the crime, crime rates that has occurred along with the route. Uh, it then uh, we have used the Google uh, Google Map API to estimate all the possible routes from one source destination. Uh, source to destination, and after we have known the possible routes between the source and the destination, we have analyzed all the all the we have done huge analytics of the data um, uh, based on the crimes and the history of the crimes that has taken place uh, uh, along uh, that particular route, and uh, so uh, so three possible routes are displayed to the user, and we have uh, we have uh, we have profiled the one route based on the criminal uh, criminal activities that has taken place along with one route, as well as we have taken we have displayed the distance also. So whatever the preference of the user is, uh, user can select one particular route, and uh, the API will tell which particular route is good for the user. So that's the purpose of our API, uh, Bond Voyage. Thank you. Okay, uh, can we also queue total recall after these guys?
so when, after they get down, you guys are up behind them. Actually, uh, stands for Human uh, Predictability Reader. Uh, who here likes poker? You like poker? Right. Well, what we try doing is, is we basically try making a computer that could predict whether a person is bluffing or not. We try making an app out of this. Unfortunately, we don't have enough time because we did have to scrap a bit of it. Um, we, you know, my uh, partner had to leave. We only had two people running. Um, at a time. So, but what we did get done is we got done um, some pretty, I guess, uh, complex algorithms. Uh, ones that use uh, hypergeometric uh, multivariate distributions, and another one that uses a uh, Poisson. We use uh, Poisson to determine, uh, based upon how they bet, what exactly, what exactly their future was going to be. So, let's say if someone like bet really, really high. The first time around, you know they're an aggressive player, right? I mean, because in a way you're also predicting the personality here too. We also factor in time and other situations and other variables to actually do this. Yeah. Um. So here's our code. Uh, it was a cool idea. So that's basically what it does. So, Stuff because you're really bored. <laughs> or, uh, so, 
<laughs> Once you get to a certain place, you can go to school, work, store, something like that. You can get a different reminder. You know. Um, so next, we have it sort of okay. I want to set a reminder in my phone and say okay when Amaya calls, I want to remind him. You know, I want to borrow his book or something. I want to, you know, remind him of something, but make sure that I say this during the call. And hopefully, when he calls, I'll actually. Uh, <laughs> so hopefully, we have a signal for this. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So a man is calling now. While I'm talking to him, I say hi. Oh, and um, oh, I want to remind him that test. Um, or maybe I want to remind him that. You know, whatever. I want to remind him to bring the book tomorrow. Uh, finally, um, we have a Chrome plugin. We all know that thing on smart plugin. Stupid. And more power to what you guys need to do. But <laughs> and so we have to allow access to it, but I think. <laughs> So that one would be visible to all the users around who are using this app, or other shopkeepers. If, if you want to, so it's like it often happens that you are in some place and you are unaware of the offers which are uh, being offered at some other shop maybe in the near vicinity. So this would um, be overcoming that problem. So best part is that your advertisements are going to be uh, dynamic. You can change them on hourly basis or you can change them on uh, change them every every second. It's your call. So uh, yes, and uh, yeah, one more thing is uh, users or public they can basically uh, enjoy the fun of talking to people by being anonymous. And advertisers in the near vicinity they get to advertise, and thus it's like a win-win situation for both advertisers and users. That is how it works. <laughs>
Okay, so uh, it's a particularly difficult app to sh show a demo because it doesn't work in this orientation. Uh, this is AR campus, which is augmented reality. So uh, if you ever came to a new campus and uh, finding your destination is actually a quest. So even if you have a 2D map or uh, you wouldn't uh, you know, feel uh, comfortable finding directions to it. So th this is like uh, a 3D rendering of, of the buildings around. Uh, you can actually uh, search for a particular location. Uh, let's say uh, search location. Search location. OK. So let's say um, Starbucks. You, you want to know where Starbucks is here? And So it would specifically show in which direction uh, you have uh, Starbucks, and, and it would also show the distance, uh, how much distance it is from here. So you would go in that direction. Actually, uh, it's a pretty difficult app to implement. Uh, the, re uh, uh, the reason it became so easy is because we had Wikitude SDK, which took off all the augmented uh, reality rendering. We had to do, uh, I mean, we had to understand the functionality of SDK in this 24 hours and uh, do coding in JavaScript to get this app running. And uh, that's pretty much it. And uh, you can even hard code uh, the buildings, I mean, uh, data some other buildings which are not there here. Uh, so that's a wrap. Sorry for the five minutes delay that caused because we our app is a GPS app and we are not gonna we didn't have a good GPS signal here and we could show you show you a demo right there or not now. So what our app actually does, let's say it's a fine Saturday morning and you guys wanna out and you wanna play basketball. But all your friends who are on Facebook and uh, all your phone contacts friends are just lazy enough to play basketball at this yeah. moment. So what if like there are there are like hundreds of people around you, like, like 0.5 miles of radius, who wants to play basketball but can't connect with you? So what you do generally is like open this app and just search now with basketball. And if anybody is you who's using this app is nearby in your location, you will get your contacts and phone information. So you can just call them, or like you can just hang out, play basketball. And the other thing about this, another cool feature about this app is that if uh, there are 100 people like, who wants to do painting or something, and uh, all those information are stored in our database, and if you just want to like, open this app, it'll just show you the interests of all the 100 people in your painting. So that's a wrap. And also, we, we are happy to show you guys the demo outside.
Good afternoon, guys. Uh, I am Suren, and uh, me and my uh, teammates, uh, Prerna and Vikas, we try to build together a grad student like app because we are third year PhD students in, here in uh, computer science and mechanical engineering. Uh, some of you, uh, some of you undergraduate guys, might not like us because the software that we build can detect whether uh, you are looking at your paper during your examination or not. <laughs> but the application that this was oriented was, uh, let's say you are driving a car and uh, these days we are getting laser sensors in our car so we can detect your distance, uh, you can, your time of collision to your pre uh, to other cars on the highway and if you are not looking towards the road we can alert you, we can give you a signal that there. Or uh, for us, uh, particularly in our research, uh, it, it's helpful when robots are trying to be social, they're trying to talk to humans, and they know which direction are you looking at. Uh, well, this thing has uh, never been possible before, uh, uh, before we got this depth sensors, because uh, using a camera under perspective projection, uh, this problem is underdetermined, which means that your number of equations are less than your number of variables. But using the depth sensor, we used the ASUS XTR and we, it's completely open source. And uh, we try to get six degrees uh, of pose, which is which has three degrees of rotation and three degrees of translation, and uh, uh, it works by first detecting and tracking human heads in a image and trying to find significant features uh, in the depth image and then trying to track them and uses uh, uh, matrix algebra to find rotation and translation. Uh, that's pretty much all. Thank you. Okay, how many of you have had have chosen a course in the past that turned out wasn't the best course to be chosen? Alright, we've all been. University Informer is designed to fix this problem and to inform it. We know you're on the go, so University Informer also looks great on your phone. There's an abundance of data available on course and instructor quality. However, it's not formatted in a way that makes it easy for you to understand the questions. Let's take a look. While University Informer is accessible to students of any school, we'll use University of Buffalo for the sake of example. Let's consider a new engineering student, and we're interested in how the departments rate simplicity, quality, and clarity. The engineering discipline, which dominates all of the criteria, is computer engineering. The student can make a more informed decision about which department to enroll in this year. Now we'll consider a math student interested in identifying a high quality computer science elective that will expand their horizons. To fulfill the elective, we investigate operating systems, computer vision, and networking. The clear choice is 421 or operating systems. Let us see who we should take this course with. In investigating the quality, or investigating the quality of the 421 professors, there's no clear choice. To further differentiate, let's add another criteria. Being a mathematics student, our user wants to ensure the high availability of the professor. Adding this additional criteria, we see that Tefik Kosar is the most available of the 421 professors. This is who our student would select to take the course with. 
<laughs> University Informer presents this wealth of information to you in intuitive graphical manner, seamlessly integrate, informing you of alternatives to course and professor selection. As for graduating students, we wish this product were around for us and we're glad it's around. professional career. So this is uh, where our uh, projection comes from. And uh, I believe most of you guys are programmers. So some uh, one day and you guys will find a job and uh, most of our IT companies have prepared tons of uh, algorithm and data structure questions to caution you guys in three or four phone interviews or six or seven hours on site interview. So, but does that test the help, uh, system help to make the right decision and to find the perfect match? This is a question. So as you guys know, Chuck Norris never pick a candidate by just uh, interview questions because he knows programmers not, mach not machines to solve interview questions. So, but how to dis distinguish top coders and uh, average programs? Yes, the answer is hello world. So next, let our teammates to introduce our platform. Well, you might use information data visualization to show what is your ability level. Like, I just automatically I'll show you the I'm in the graph, but you connect to one of the APIs. It's like the company, if they want to find somebody that you're very good at Java and uh, just uh, know a little bit to say plus plus, so she, uh, they can click, they can make up uh, this graph and find that, that those person who fit their requirement. And uh, if they can make friends with each other and see others uh, things like this, so they can encourage them to code as many code as they can. So there's a uh, good uh, socialization. Thank you. Uh, I don't have to do a smart boss. <laughs> All right. 
I'm sorry for the delay, guys. We are Team Lassie, and we're presenting uh, a complex cloud here. Um, we've noticed the rise of businesses using cloud-based private storage for their, their critical data. In 2012, companies spent $175 billion on data security. Now, the problem with that currently is the way the data is stored in the form of just raw data. With the storage of raw data, uh, you, you have no way of knowing what uh, malicious activity um, and when it's happened because it's just stored in a raw form. So our solution to this problem is by storing it in the form of a monad or a functional computation. So by storing it in a fun functional computation, we have the ability to watch what users do and roll back unwanted changes. So here we have an authenticated client connected to our server. Now, he's going to be doing addition operations. He does the addition operation on his client, and the, the server sees that he's done the computation with plus one. He also makes an addition of plus two, which is seen on the server. Both of these are authenticated. Now we have a malicious user who's going to come in and say, I want to multiply all these values by 11 and screw everything up. Now, that's going to also be shown on the server, but this authenticated user has no idea that that was malicious. So the server's going to, he's going to continue to do his operations, so he'll do plus four, and we will see it on the server and you'll get your result. Now, at this point, what if the server figures out, okay, this is malicious? How do I remove it? So that we have the ability to then clean up that computation from the malicious user, which is the multiplying by 11, and then recompute the answer and get the correct result. Now, if these were stored in the form of just raw data, how would you know where the malicious uh, operation was computed? You have no way of watching sequencing through how to do that. But storing it in the form of a functional computation you can immediately say, okay, all of these functional computations were malicious, thus I can remove them. Now, with, the, with storing uh, data in the, the form of functional computations, how do you, um, how do you use the trade-off for having... Uh, sorry, sorry, but thank you guys. Thanks. All right, what's up? So we are SmartBus, and uh, so say you're standing in front of the student union, you've just been studying all night, and you're waiting for the bus, and you have no idea where it is, and finally it comes around the corner, taking its sweet time, rolls up, and there's nobody on it. You've been waiting for 30 minutes for it to pick up absolutely nobody. So our software, SmartBus, could be running on the uh, cameras, that the security cameras that are above all the bus stops, and can count exactly how many people are at each bus stop and then prioritize each bus stop depending on those results to give a more fluid and direct approach rather than the rigid uh, approach it takes right now. All right, so in the first one on the, on the left, uh, that is the intermediate image that just shines the human shape, and on the right, that is the actual detection on the square. Um, that is a group of people. It's just a giant box around the three. And this is they're separate, so we'll do two separate boxes. And this is a complicated one of both groups and separate images. And yeah. Oh, oh yeah. And then uh, on top, there's a priority list that uh, will be sent to the bus drivers that uh, will tell which stops have the highest priority, which ones have the lowest. And that's our app.
Hi, everyone. Um, we are going to be going, and we have created basically a, uh, a website that can show you everything that is going on on campus uh, at any time. So if we go to the page, it displays it in a list, um, shows everything that's going on. We have tags at the top, gaming, parties, clubs, any kind of uh, tags that you can associate with your events. Um, so if you click on one, you'd be hacking up here. It has the title, a description, time, place, and date, and then you can leave comments um, <laughs> with various users. Okay. Um, we scroll back up. Uh, we have a login page. Um, log out first. Log in. If you don't have a username or password already, you can sign up. Um, there's a post page uh, that you can't do unless you're sending in right now. But, uh, yeah, it's just it's basically so that if you're bored um, at any time of the day, you've been studying all day and you want to relax, you can see what's going on on campus and figure out you know, something to do. Okay, we are game uh, What we the, the problem that we're trying to solve is that there's a lot of computers out there that could be being used for scientific research, uh, but like, because with programs like SETI at home and things like that, but people don't use that because there's no incentive, okay? And the uh, companies or the organizations that are doing this are research organizations which just have funding from the government and things like that, so it's not like they can pay users to use their computing power. So our idea is to give users incentive to use computing power by having them play games and by Using the computer to do some scientific uh, computations, we will give them uh, extra bonuses in the game. So maybe extra coins, extra lives. Uh, so in our game, we took an open source version of a pinball game for Android, and we made it so that uh, every 10 seconds, we would do some computation uh, on the phone, which would then uh, send the results, so we're finding prime numbers. Uh, so we would send the results to the server, and then the server would reply and say, okay, good job. We're going to give you a better multiplier. So as you just saw, uh, Bro got a two times multiplier. Uh, and then 10 seconds later, uh, we do another job, uh, because we're just simulating what we could do, okay? So uh, once we get five times multiplier, we take away the multiplier, and we say, okay, you can have an extra life now, okay? so. The way I look at this is things like SETI at home, the only people that do that are people who are active in computing and things like that. They want to do science, they want to do computing. This is something that your grandmother could do Farmville games and she could do this, okay? Because this could just be something that goes on in the browser. So this is something that everybody in the world could do and instead of science moving at the pace we're moving at now, SETI at home could launch and go 100 times faster overnight and it would be just the norm instead of something that a few people do and it's just kind of weird. Uh, we also have another client which is just a Java client, so it's always cross platform. They also have a
Hey guys, uh, we're from St. Bonaventure and we created AI rules. Um, the inspiration for this was from code.org, how to get um, non programmers into programming. So we combined our love of games and our love of coding to create this. So on AI Awards, you uh, create an account, and with it, oh, it's not up. Alright, uh, with AI Wars, you're able to make an account and upload your own custom AI to the server. Once it's there, it'll compile and it'll run against all other AIs with the same uh, game kit, such as Tic Tac Toe, Connect 4, and Chips. So, uh, in a quick example, uh, you can select the game Chips, uh, we'll do a round robin tournament, we'll turn uh, Bossity on, as we call it, so it'll show each of the game moves. And you can see Code T's um, bot one, it'll show all the game moves. And with this, you get a sense of competition, a sense of partnership, and on top of that, you learn how to code. Then uh, you get a stat sheet with all your player stats, you get medals, it shows you the bots, and it gives you a bio. So it's a community for coders to learn how to code, and to compete against one another. That's the yeah, was. Thank you. All right, hey everyone, uh, we are a Photo Excel. Our app utilizes the Sangrid API, Abby, and Java code in our program. Abby converts a picture into text. That picture is a receipt. So that receipt is converted into text, and then we have a server, Amazon EC2, that receives that text, open, opens it up for our Java program to lead and decipher with Java uh, in Amazon EC2. It was a little bit difficult for us to integrate Java with Amazon EC2, but we muscled through it throughout the night, and we got it to work for this demo. Uh, the result is an application that can read a receipt and return its total and taxes. That, the application has major applicability to our daily budgets and yearly tax returns. In 24 hours, we were, we were able to make this demo work and with receipts from CVS, dancing chopsticks from the Commons, and Walmart. Balancing your budget can be as simple as taking a photo. And this is uh, what we have for you guys. So. You can see that uh, we have a receipt. Uh, the receipt uh, was from a photo. It was converted completely uh, into text. And from this text, uh, we can uh, use a Java code to take the totals and to take the text. All so you can see right here, well, for quite a second, you saw uh, that we had the total and we had the taxes. Um, with that, we converted it into an Excel file uh, that could just be output a straight to your, uh, your mail or sent to, your, to you from that. So, and this is what we worked on this weekend. I'm pretty proud of it. I'm happy with it. Uh, and yeah.
The whole lot of Asian guys are up next, just saying. Right. Hello, friends. Uh, we are Movement Method Cloud, and we are we have created an app, a cloud-based racing car settings evaluation tool. So, before a racing car, certain settings have to be done to a racing car before a race. So, for example, wheel base ratio or steering ratio, those have to be set up for a particular track. There has to be an optimal setting for the track. So, currently, there are tools which evaluate those. But those all are proprietary tools, which are very, very costly, uh, cost thousands of dollars. And especially amateur racers cannot afford them. So what our moment the cloud does is puts this application in the cloud. We have created our own application to do the same. Puts it in the cloud and charges them on per use basis. So we'll show this app. So these are all the criteria which you can give. And this is the final. Uh, moment method plot which is generated, which is this computation, this pretty complex computation, which is done in the server side. And they return this. And anyone who's familiar with this sort of graph, like an engineer or even a racer who has some technical knowledge, he can interpret this graph. And our future plans are that we will have a database of each and every racing track, that what are the optimal settings for that track. And once he inputs the parameters, of his vehicle, it will give him the suggestions that uh, what all uh, adjustments he needs to do. And after this has a very small audience space, but a very dedicated and repetitive uh, audience. This uh, Thank you. Everybody. Um, as you can see, we like uh, hardware, so we think that software is really cool if you can make something move. And uh, one thing that we noticed is that stuff like Arduino and Raspberry Pi is becoming a lot more user friendly, a lot more accessible. So we're trying to work on a home automation system that is modular and open source. So what we hope to accomplish is to have um, you create your own hardware. So basically, if you have something that you want, want to automate, then you build it, and then it integrates modularly into our system. So right now, uh, we ran into a lot of problems. So we had to set up our own network because uh, it's not friendly to connect to UV's wireless systems based on their authentication methods. So we're just going to have to wait a bit before we get on. So this is the home page of our site. So this is hosted on the cart, and it's interfaced with all the various sensors we have. Um, we have demonstrations of some appliances that you might find in your home. So in the front, we have a set of automated blinds. There's a lamp that's remote controlled on the second story of the cart. Then we have a carbon monoxide detector, smoke detector. There's also a security camera behind the uh, stack of electronics. and uh, we also have temperature sensors, uh, daylight sensors, and what we're hoping to accomplish is uh, stuff like circadian rhythm improvements, where people who get uh, winter depression can set the system to automate their lights. So if we have our bedroom, then we have a schedule for the blinds to come up with daylight, and if there is no daylight at a set time, then we have, uh, we have lights to come on.
Trust me, the blinds did go down, but this is a very finicky setup. All right, thanks a lot. Things work? Okay. All right, thanks. Um, so here's our app. It's specific to the UB campus. And our goal is for you to be able to input where you would like to go. There's a list of buildings you can choose from where you go. And it'll decide if you should walk there or if you should take the bus there. Um, so here's a map of the campus as it is right now. This is a bus. You might have noticed it just moved. Um, and if you look again in a few seconds, it'll move. Um, so that's actually pulling live GPS info off the bus. This is our location, and all these red ones are the bus stops. So. Up here we also have a table. You can select a bus stop and be able to tell when the next bus is coming. Um, so that's already very useful for you to be able to decide is it worth it to wait for the bus or is one not scheduled to come. On top of that though, we have on the left there, if you select where would you like to go. So he selects, he wants to go to uh, Griner. Governors, right? <laughs> governors. Um, and it decided that we need a bus there. Um, so you can see um, it says an oddly specific amount of minutes it'll take you to bus there. Um, and so if we wait for the bus, that's the best option. Do another one that will show the best option if we walk there. Yep, so we should obviously walk to Ketter because there's no bus from here next door. Um, so it's most optimal to not walk to the bus stop and then walk back. That's how we did that. There's the stadium. I think that's it. Is that it? That's it. This was our first hackathon, and we totally bombed it. Um, so we're going to take the opportunity to uh, make you guys aware of a very common problem, uh, more common than we would uh, really like. We are attempting to solve the problem of um, uh, misadministration of medications in hospitals, uh, both from mothers and nurses. Uh, it happens a whole lot more than any of us would want. The idea was to take the process from being a, a directive one to an interactive one. Um, some of the technology is really good at, uh, unfortunately. We came up with very little. Thank you. Obesity is 
is a growing concern everywhere and people are trying to shift it or they're trying to build it. So we came up with this idea of making this device which we now call a fitometer. Now what this fitometer is, it's basically just a weighing machine that you can keep beneath your bathroom's floor mat and it, 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 it records your weight every time you walk over it. Then this recorded weight, this, this weight that is that's recorded is in analog format. So using this <laughs> we, we convert it into digital format. Then this digital format is then forwarded to Raspberry Pi, which now transmits it wirelessly to a secure cloud. From this server, you can, this data cannot be accessed using an app or a web page. So this app now acts as your fitness guru. It, you, can, you can set up a profile, it tells you your target weight, your current weight, uh, you can make your profile based on your regime, you want to weight gain, weight loss, what have you. You can, it will tell you in the past week how much you have gained or you know, lost and it tells you that this is, I mean you have to start working out now and this and that. You can also configure your machine and Arduino and Raspberry Pi from this app. You can also compete with your, with your colleagues. Your, your friends on Facebook and see who's doing how well. And all this comes at a cost of, you know, at a manufacturing level of less than $60. That's it, thank you. Yeah, so that's it. Thank you Hi, um, so I came in about midnight last night and I decided that I was just going to do something in front of it. So I designed a 16-bit CPU with a 4-bit opcode and 16 registers and that was the theory and then I decided I was going to implement it in C, so I did that. And then I wrote some assembler for it, but I didn't write um, an assembler, I just wrote some assembly, so I actually had to hand transcribe that into hexadecimal, which I have right here, and then when the uh, actual thing runs, it says hello world. <laughs> so uh, it can actually do a lot more than that. It's a fully uh, Turing complete CPU. Uh, unfortunately, I just didn't have enough time to show that off. And that's basically what I did. Because like some of them like the audio converter, like if they just